Hello. Good morning. And welcome again to Thursday Morning Prayer, coming to you from Community Presbyterian Church in Payson, Arizona. I'm Reverend Linda Westcott, a retired Presbyterian minister who attends the church here in Payson. And one of our team of four from our church who enjoy taking their turn in bringing you scripture and prayer and perhaps some interesting thoughts to ponder. And today I hope to bring you a message about a treasure, one that we can all have and give to the world. If you happen to have missed Thursday morning, well, don't worry because as you see, we're still here. So just take a moment and maybe find a comfortable spot to relax and we will begin with a prayer. Let us pray. Our faithful God in whom we trust, as our world becomes more and more immense in darkness, immersed in darkness, we look for the light and find it in your Son, Jesus Christ. We look for hope and find it in his promise that he would be with us always. And he tells us that we are the light of the world. So may we carry that light with us wherever we are, even through the darkness, like a candle of hope that lights up our path and shows us the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, our psalm reading today is from Psalm 145, about the greatness and the goodness of God. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall extol your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. They will recount the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. They will proclaim the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abundant in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all of his doings. The Lord is near to all to call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. 
My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. And now we go to our letter reading of 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 7. And the Apostle Paul here is writing to his Corinthian church and reminding them of the hope they have in the fullness of God's plan to redeem his people. Because this has now come to pass right in their generation. And it's a message they will carry with them that he has made his light to shine in our hearts. I will read now from the new revised standard version of the Bible. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of the world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from clearly seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Light will shine in the darkness, who has shone in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. Yes, Paul says we have this in clay jars. And what does he mean? That we have a treasure in clay jars? The New International Reader's Version puts it this way. Treasure is kept in dry jars. In the same way, we have the treasure of the good news in these earthly bodies of ours. That shows that the mighty power of the good news comes from God. It doesn't come from us. And what does that mean? Well, first of all, we have to think about that perishable container that Paul mentions, those clay jars that he mentions. The Living Bible Translation says it this way, But this precious gift, this light and power that now shines within us, is held in a perishable container that is in our weak bodies. What kind of perishable container are we that we might look that we might hold God's gift of light and power within our weak and perishable bodies? Not within a precious porcelain cup or a vase, locked up somewhere and put out of reach? Yet, metaphorically speaking now, we have this treasure in these precarious jay, uh, jars of clay within us. And sometimes we may fear that we are not the best jars to have gotten the honors. In the Apostle Paul's time, though, clay jars were very useful, but fragile. Since their material was inexpensive, they broke easily, it wouldn't have 
taken much in Paul's time for a jar to be knocked over and shattered in pieces all over the floor. But jars of clay were everyday items that Paul's audience would have been familiar with. They were commonplace items that were made of the most basic material, earth. And people from every class of society would have been familiar with these with these vessels. The average person could probably have had multiple clay jars around because of the versatility that they had in their homes. But it may seem strange to us that God should put this greatest treasure in the most common and fragile vessels available, us Christians, when Jesus, whom Jesus calls the light of the world. Yes, we are weak, cracked, and far less than perfect clay jars, but the treasure within us is glorious. We have something believers of the Old Testament longed for and dreamt of. They heard about the one who was to come, who would wipe away their sins and fulfill the law they were trying to keep. But we are living in the full victory of Jesus. And he has chosen to share his light and truth. He wants to use you to shine the light into the darkness. At home, we try to place our lamps in the most strategic places in our homes if we want to make the whole room brighter. And Jesus tells his followers that they must avoid the temptation to hide that light for some worldly purpose. In Mark 4, 21, we hear Jesus say, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed and not on the lampstand? The bowl which Christ refers to is probably that bushel, <clears throat> a bushel basket for collecting grain. We've sung that song about the bushel basket. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let us pray. Our ever faithful God, teach us to trust in you and help us to grow in that trust, knowing that though others may doubt your presence in this today's world, we will know and believe that you are always with us. Our ever loving God, give us the courage to step out in faith in these dark days when we see so much thoughtless and needless violence and in so many ways, no respect for human life or for the least of us. Fill our hearts with your spirit and encourage us to speak your words of love and hope, even when around us are fearful and so many have gone their own way and have lost their faith in you. May we not seek to install fear in others, but promote calmness and hope even when in times of trouble. Help us, Almighty God, especially in these sometimes dark days, to still see the light of the presence before us, of your presence before us, guiding us. And give us the courage to step out and spread the light of the treasure we hold within us resting within the light of your love. May we not fear the darkness of this world, knowing that you are with us and that your love is shining out through us. Encourage us that we might spread the light of that love and make a difference in this world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. And you may say it along with me, but in whatever um, 
version of it you're most com comfortable with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And now receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever.